Raynaud's phenomenon is characterized by reversible ischemia of peripheral arterioles. This phenomenon arises as a result of an abnormal response to cold or stress, leading to a distinctive triphasic reaction. In Raynaud's phenomenon there is excessive sympathetic nervous system response. This response involves the mediation of vasoconstriction in arteries and arterioles through alpha-2 adrenergic noradrenaline. This heightened reaction is central to the development of the characteristic symptoms observed in Raynaud's. In individuals with Raynaud's, there is a reduction in sympathetic immunoreactive neurons in the skin. This reduction contributes to a defect in the skin's ability to vasodilate. This underlying issue further complicates the condition. A distinctive feature of Raynaud's phenomenon is the triphasic response accompanied by specific color changes. The first phase involves intense vasospasm, leading to a pallor, or white coloration. The second phase occurs as tissues grow colder and blood stagnates, resulting in a bluish hue, or cyanosis. The final phase is marked by a red color as blood rapidly flows back, followed by hyperemia. This triphasic response adds to the uniqueness of Raynaud's. The vasoconstriction observed in Raynaud's is not limited to specific areas. Rather, it affects a wide range of body parts, including the fingers, toes, ear tips, nose, face, tongue, knees, and even nipples. This broad distribution of the response demonstrates the complexity of this phenomenon. Raynaud's disease versus Raynaud's phenomenon, a comparison. In understanding Raynaud's, it's crucial to differentiate between Raynaud's disease, primary Raynaud's, and Raynaud's phenomenon, secondary Raynaud's. Let's discuss distinctions between these two manifestations. Primary Raynaud's, often referred to as Raynaud's disease, is an idiopathic condition. Here, the underlying cause is unknown. Key characteristics include primary Raynaud's presence with symmetric attacks. Tissues remain unaffected, showing no signs of necrosis, ulceration, or gangrene. Moreover, there's no identifiable secondary cause based on the patient's history and general physical examination. Nail fold capillaries appear normal, and testing for anti-nuclear antibodies yields negative results. Additionally, the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, ESR, remains within the normal range. On the other hand, secondary Raynaud's, often termed Raynaud's phenomenon, is associated with underlying conditions, most commonly autoimmune diseases. Secondary Raynaud sets in after the age of 30. Episodes are often intense, painful, and may exhibit asymmetry. Additionally, they can be accompanied by ischemic skin lesions. The clinical picture might suggest a connective tissue disease, with features such as arthritis and abnormal lung function. Autoantibodies specific to autoimmune diseases might be present. Microscopy of nail fold capillaries reveals evidence of microvascular disease. This distinction between primary and secondary Raynaud's aids in understanding the diverse clinical presentations and underlying factors. Secondary causes of Raynaud's phenomenon. Secondary Raynaud's, unlike its primary counterpart, arises as a result of various underlying conditions. Let's explore the diverse factors that can trigger this phenomenon. Secondary Raynaud's can stem from a range of autoimmune disorders, including rheumatoid arthritis, as well as inflammatory myopathies. Additionally, arterial occlusive syndromes like atherosclerosis and acute artery occlusion, along with Berger's disease due to smoking, are implicated as causative factors. These conditions highlight the intricate connection between vascular health and immune function. Certain medications and drugs have the potential to induce secondary Raynaud's. Amphetamines, diet pills, herbs containing ephedra, and decongestants are among the culprits. Beta blockers, oral estrogen, and elevated estrogen levels during the mid-cycle peak in premenopausal individuals can also trigger this phenomenon. Medications like interferon, sumatriptan, and specific migraine medicines, as well as clonidine, bleomycin, cisplatin, and exposure to polyvinyl chloride, are additional contributors. 
These drug-induced triggers emphasize the need for careful consideration of medication interactions and their potential effects on vascular responses. The presence of certain conditions affecting blood composition can also lead to secondary Raynaud's. Cold agglutinins, cryoglobulins, cold fibrinogen, and increased blood viscosity associated with myeloma or lymphoproliferative disorders are examples of these underlying factors. These hematological factors underscore the complexity of Raynaud's phenomenon, as it can arise from disruptions in blood properties. Raynaud's phenomenon isn't solely influenced by internal factors, external elements also play a role. Occupational triggers, such as prolonged exposure to vibration leading to white finger syndrome or cold injury from handling frozen commodities, can induce secondary Raynaud's. Moreover, exposure to vinyl chloride can contribute to the development of this condition. Workup for secondary Raynaud's should include nail fold microscopy, complete blood count, complete metabolic profile, urinalysis with microscopy, sedimentation rate, ESR, C-reactive protein, thyroid panel, antinuclear antibody, and extractable nuclear antigen antibody cascade. If the ANA is positive, protein electrophoresis with immunofixation electrophoresis should be obtained. Specific tests for scleroderma, such as the anti-SCL-70, the anticentromere antibodies, and RNA polymerase 3 autoantibodies, should be obtained. Centromere IgG antibody is found in Crest syndrome. RNP antibody supports the diagnosis of mixed connective tissue disease. Inflammatory myopathy workup should include anti jo one and MDA-5 antibody or the entire myositis panel. Testing for lupus should include anti-double-stranded DNA, Smith antibodies, C3, C4 complement levels, and cryoglobulins. Treatment approaches for Raynaud's phenomenon. In addressing Raynaud's phenomenon, a multifaceted approach is essential to alleviate symptoms and enhance quality of life. Let's explore the various treatment options available. General measures. The foundation of treatment begins with general measures. Patients are advised to wear gloves or mittens to shield hands from the triggering cold temperatures. Maintaining overall body warmth is pivotal, wearing warm clothing like shirts, coats, and hats helps prevent the exaggerated vasospasm that leads to Raynaud's phenomenon. Protecting hands from injury is crucial due to slow healing and susceptibility to infections. Regular application of softening and lubricating lotions helps manage dry skin. It's imperative to quit smoking and avoid sympathomimetic drugs such as decongestants, diet pills, and amphetamines. For many with primary Raynaud's phenomenon, these general measures prove sufficient to manage symptoms. However, medical or surgical intervention is considered for individuals with severe symptoms or tissue injury. Medications. Calcium channel blockers take the forefront as the primary medication for Raynaud's phenomenon. These medications offer moderate relief, showing greater effectiveness in primary Raynaud's compared to the secondary variant. Slow-release nifedipine, amlodipine, felodipine, isratipine, and nisoldipine are more effective than verapamil, nicardipine, and diltiazem. Other potentially effective medications include angiotensin II receptor blockers, topical nitrates, phosphodiesterase inhibitors like sildenafil, tadalafil, and vardenafil, and even SSRIs like fluoxetine. In cases of severe or refractory episodes where digital loss is threatened, intravenous infusions of prostacycline or its analogs, epoprostanol, iloprost, triprostanol, may be necessary. Surgical Measures When attacks become frequent, severe, and start to impact daily functioning, surgical intervention may be considered. Sympathectomy, particularly digital sympathectomy, is an option. This procedure involves cutting sympathetic nerves to address excessive vasospasm and improve blood circulation. Digital sympathectomy is especially beneficial when medical measures have been exhausted and trophic changes have developed.